Welcome, delegates, to another exciting session at Gato 2021. Today's panel discussion is on real money gaming perspectives. The moderator for today's session is Roland Landers, CEO of All India Gaming Federation, Kapil Rathi, President, Jungli Games, Krishnendu Guha, Chief Revenue Officer, Adda 52, Sudhir Kamath, CEO and co founder, Nine Stacks, Yashash Agrawal, CEO and co founder, Skill Clash, and Parikshit Madishetti, Managing Director, Grid Logic. I'd like to hand it over to Roland to moderate the discussion and start the panel. Over to you, Roland. Yeah, thanks, Om. Uh, I'm glad to be here on this uh, moderating this panel. And uh, I would like to welcome all the five panelists here with me, whom you just introduced. Uh, since the uh, topic is uh, uh, real money gaming perspectives, I thought I could, you know, uh, before getting into the uh, meaty questions, probably get uh, what, uh, you know, each of these panelists uh, believe could be uh, perspectives uh, as far as the R&D industry is concerned. So maybe, uh, you know, very, very briefly, and then we'll get into the uh, larger Q&A. So may I request Parikshit if we can, you know, go first and then go around the table and then uh, uh, maybe I can start with the questions. But uh, yeah, just before that, Parik, I just wanted to give a, a you know a little overview uh, about the uh, uh, real money gaming uh, industry. You know, there are a lot of terms uh, we use uh, within the industry, but uh, the audience at large uh, uh, really get confused. So when we say one of them is RMG or real money gaming, uh, you know, would in-app be real money gaming? Uh, because you know money is generated, would uh, the offshore guys uh, come under RNG because also so there there are a lot of perspectives. So I thought you know it will be interesting. But at a very high level, obviously you know the industry uh, definitely is a sinusure of uh, attention as we speak and uh, doing exceedingly well. Uh, and uh, and also has you know great prospects for the future in the next two to five years. So. Uh, Having said that, we'll get into the numbers later, but I think Parikshit, you can go first and then we we'll go down the table. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Roland. For me, at least, uh, RMG is specific to Indian skill gaming companies. And uh, when we started off, uh, skill gaming was only Rummy and then uh, poker joined our batch and then now fantasy sports and now um, many casual sports uh, in the format of uh, contests uh, are actually considered as RMG gaming. So. This skill gaming, uh, which is done by Indian companies with uh, base as India and who is who are paying GST, are considered to be uh, RMG for me personally, at least. And um, I think we way back uh, launched our product in 2012, uh, and since then we were hoping that uh, India would change in five years. Uh, in fact, it didn't change in five years, and Telangana ban happened, so we had to shut down our uh, businesses and move to other states. That was a big uh, uh, milestone for us in terms of uh, testing our businesses. And uh, from there, we said, okay, next five years, something will change. There have been ups and downs in the RMG industry. Uh, good thing is that all our customers and players have supported us. And um, it's a positive vibe for me and my company, at least when it comes to uh, looking forward. Um, if not five years, 10 years down the lane, I would see pure RMG uh, gaming companies listed in our stock exchanges. Uh, having said that, Ada52 and uh, Open Play being a part of uh, Deltin and uh, Nazara is a great thing. And um, uh, I look forward for uh, a pure RMG company which has all of these skill games uh, being listed in our stock exchanges. That's my view, Roland. Okay, Parikshit, thank you so much. Uh agree with you yeah from the early days the perspective that you gave and also something about the future why not you know some of the indian bread uh, rng companies are being uh, listed on the stock market yeah krishna if you can kind of so uh, i'll just take the cue from where parikshit left and uh, I, I i actually agree and when we founded this company in 2011 uh, the biggest challenge that we faced was the social stigma that poker uh, whether it's a skill game or it's part of gambling 
and uh, over a period of time obviously at that point of time people were also reluctant in spending money for gaming especially online it's it's kind of uh, something which people looked down but i think over a period of time in the next 10 years or so i think that mindset has changed a lot uh, with lot of uh, these other companies coming in who are uh, diversifying not only limiting to poker and rummy but also uh, spreading it out to normal casual games as well which has opened the market for lot of these recreational players to come in and eventually they are seeing that it's really not which is being termed as being termed as a social taboo but it's actually a platform where you can use your skills to win money so uh, taking that into foray and it's very important for any uh, company who is into this real money gaming industry uh, it's very important for that company to ensure that the trust is built because uh, when a player's money is involved and he's putting some amount of money to play and obviously win and loss is a part of part and parcel of every game whether it's a live game or a real game or like uh, on a field game but then how much skill is involved and eventually that trust whether i can put that money and eventually it's a safe platform where that money is not getting misused or it's it's purely skill which i'm using to win that money back so i think that's the most important factor we should focus at which should drive eventually the overall rng space in india despite obviously some states banning uh, or treating it at uh, treating this as uh, non skill and pure betting but i think it's it all boils down to trust and how much we can ensure uh, to uh, safeguard people's interest that's what will make this thrive and take it to the next level yeah thanks krishna obviously it's been driven by our founding fathers so we reached where we are today uh you know cross the billion dollars and uh, i agree on the trust uh, factor of course we'll get into that uh, in, in, in due course uh kapil if i may request you briefly to you know give your perspective on the industry sure i think what parikshit mentioned like if i have to define rng industry i would put like in a four pillars and i will talk about a fifth one which is upcoming and we can divide that line i think uh, rummy and poker were always there fantasy started pick up picking up a lot from 2016 with dream eleven finding a lot of traction by 2018 you would know that there were 50 new companies already in one single year which were tracking into trying trying to get into the fantasy sports that paid more way for uh, the third pillar which is now the casual gaming is where well, uh, where we are seeing a lot of companies uh, you yeah, know such as winzo mp l paytm first games uh, games of everything everything from casual to fantasy to rummy and trying to club that into a one super gaming app and finally i mean some people always try to include e sports into real money some try to keep it out of it just purely on the complexity of the industry itself um but that's how we look at overall from the industry standpoint of view and uh, i think what parikshit shared about is like of course every business go through ups and downs like we have seen that ola was being banned in let's say bangalore or one uh, mg being banned in madras and every business has been going through these ups and downs but what is very interesting about uh, real money industries in fact we have managed to create more industry value uh, as we have moved ahead we have found more user base every time we feel like hey do we have enough users do we have more users in the industry surprisingly we just were baffled that yes there is much more deeper penetration which we can always think about um and of course it's not just what we as operators do there's also a lot of support or indirectly help which we got from whatever whatever was happening around in the ecosystem speed around uh, you know making the data cheaper making the smartphone more access, uh, accessible or um, doing the micro transactions on payments building more confidence for people to do digital payments we do i think that is more of a supporting infra which overall country has seen and uh, i think that is going to continue to grow now i think we can already see a next wave of growth coming from tier 2 cities as well uh, where 
earlier five years back it was majorly very focused on tier one and the even today after you know different of course one challenges of course we all know that is uh, state battles but all in all things have been you know very positive if you look at the whole covid thing it just boosted the industry by one and a half years we accelerated the growth for the whole industry by at least one to one and a half year whatever we are thinking that will hit in 2023 is something is most likely to be hit in 2022 um and this has also paid way for building a lot of investor interest uh for uh, for the overall gaming industry not just the rmg industry if you just look at the last one year we have you know gaming industry as such has you know got around 600 million plus in funding uh, which itself is unparalleled compared to the last five years before this so that speaks about the uh, outlook nazara has a recent ipo what prakash talked about which was subscribed like more than 100 times or 150 times uh, which also speaks about like where we see this industry can go uh, these are just some i would still say like a nascent stages of the industry and there's long way to go from here okay thank you uh, kapil yeah, you did uh, cover some parts of what i would propose to you know ask uh, but yeah there are definitely uh, more uh, aspects that could definitely come out uh, yeah yes yes if you would like to give a perspective on on the rng industry we would like to call it the online skill game industry yeah so yes can you hear me Okay, Sudhir, if you'd like to go, I think there's some issue with his audio. Am I audible to the others? Yes. Yes. Sure. Yes. Oh. Yeah. Hi. Am I Can you hear me now? Uh, I believe there's a bit yes. of a lag at my end. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Okay, yes. Awesome. Uh, yes. Yes. If you can give your perspective, please. Yeah. Sure. Sure. Yeah. I think. Uh, um uh fully aligned with uh, what kapil krishnendu just mentioned uh, i think what i look forward to sort of um, understanding and sharing with this session is a little more around uh, the role of uh, because this is on real money gaming uh, i plan to understand and share a little more around the role of casual games when it comes to real money gaming you know we've always looked at real money gaming as skill based games right and somehow in my mind i argue that uh, even card games have this obviously there's a large degree of uh, predominantly of skill but there's also the distribution of the cards which one could argue is you know sort of luck based and you look at let's say simpler casual games right let's say a carrom or a pool game where it's uh, zero interference by the platform so to say in the outcome of the uh, you know in the outcome of the result so i think one is um, the role of casual games uh, in in uh, real money gaming and then uh sort of just trying to also understand the path to profitability when it comes to casual games right we all know that while casual games act as a great way to sort of onboard users uh, they also see smaller ticket sizes when it comes to transactions and uh would love to understand from this panel and perspectives from the panel as to can there be casual games that drive those you know 5 10000 rupee transactions uh on on one of uh, matches so i think for me uh uh Uh, this uh, is going to be very interesting to to sort of look at all of the real money gaming as we know it uh, but from more of a casual gaming uh, lens yeah thanks so yeah definitely casual gaming is uh, uh, at the edge of also we have so many uh, members in our uh, large gaming platforms so uh, definitely an important uh, uh, contributor to the overall industry uh, thanks for that uh, sudhir if you would like to uh go and you know give your perspective this yeah sure uh first of all thanks to everyone for being on the panel as well as the guys watching uh, uh to me personally it's it's quite straightforward right i think gaming is fundamentally something that uh customers do for fun uh it's it's really part of the larger entertainment industry so when you talk about media and entertainment and how people can spend money to Uh, have a good time, but the gaming is a subset within that. And within gaming, I think the fastest growing and probably the most exciting right now is what we call real money gaming, which uh, in India, from a legal point of view, boils down almost entirely to skill-based real money gaming. 
uh, i.e. games where there is a certain degree of skill. Uh, I think there are multiple debates on what is skill, what is not. But I like the simple line we sort of have picked up from one of the legal opinions on this, right? Which is, if there's a game where the action of the player is actually influencing the outcome significantly, uh, I think that's where skill is important. Whereas, uh, say if you're just saying toss a coin and guess that's heads or tails, there's nothing that you're doing to actually influence the outcome. Those are the two polar opposites in between most games will fall. Something which is predominantly a game of skill. Uh, I think what Yesha said, for example, in cards, there is a small degree of luck based on the distribution of the cards. But uh, if predominantly it is skill, it is the skill. That's the way the Indian law clearly defines it. And I think uh, that's what we look at. And this is clearly the most exciting part of the industry today. I think in the last uh, maybe 10 years since Atta came into existence or in the last three or four years since NPL and others came in for casual games, there's been a dramatic change in terms of uh, the whole user experience, right, of playing these games. Uh, it's switched almost entirely from maybe desktops to mobiles. How do you onboard customers? How do you engage them? Uh, how do you make it more fun for them? That's really the challenge. I think as long as companies like us uh, focus on getting that right for customers, I think everything else follows. I think revenue follows, investors follow, uh, market growth follows. And I think that's some of what I like to do. So, yeah, thanks. Thanks. Thank thanks, Sudhir. Uh, good you mentioned about the media and entertainment. Yeah, we uh, link up with uh, EY for their annual uh, media entertainment report and uh, also with KPMG. But yeah, uh, you know, within the ME sector, currently online gaming is the, uh, I think, the fourth uh, largest contributor to the piece and, of course, definitely the fastest growing. And within that also, Within the gaming piece, uh, obviously the uh, online skill gaming for transactional, as they call it, is uh, is 80, 85 percent. So, so great, uh, you know, uh, story there for over the last. At EIGF, we are in our sixth year of operation, so we saw this early. We could see the need for you know uh, self regulation and how the industry would progress. And like Kapil mentioned, you know, some of those fundamentals that were already actually we coincide. Our journey coincides with the uh, Digital India initiative, I think six, they also completed, I think seven years. And then, you know, we can see in the last seven years, those uh, momentum of growth have been put in place. And in the last three and four years, it's pretty, you know, taken off. So, so that's, um, so that entire digital India, digital transactions, you know, all of that contributed. So, uh, if I may now jump into, you know, the, the questions straight away, uh, Kapil, I'll start with you. Obviously, we know these numbers, you know, a billion dollars in, in top line in revenues uh, for the industry. And when I say industry, I'm taking casual everything into it right, right now. And, uh, you know, number of gamers, 350 million. Also, EY and KPMG, you know, they have given envisioned some numbers, you know, because last four years already 20 plus 20 to 25 Kager, uh, you know, consistently. I want to know what, uh, you know, could be from a business perspective. Uh, uh, you know, a guy who operates business. Sorry. Am I? Oh, something happened. Sorry. About, yeah. So I wanted to check from you what could be, you know, future trends the way you see it and where is this next level of, you know, growth going to, is this sustainable firstly? And then uh, also, you know, where is the next level of growth going to come from? Uh, you know, those are some of the things if you can dwell on. Absolutely. Yeah, I think overall, a lot of industry reports are being shared and, you know, we have the numbers. I think one biggest, like for any industry to grow, there are three key things. One, we have to find more user base. Uh, yeah. Two, we have to figure out a higher engagement from them. And three, we have to make sure they can transact more, uh, which That's turns me any industry more profitable. So as far as user base is concerned, I think Yashash talked about it, like the casual games have been fantastic in terms of generating more user base. Uh, while on both Rummy and Fantasy, for example, let's look at the Fantasy journey. I, I think before 2016, we, were, we had like less than 10 million users. By today, if you look at it, overall Fantasy user base would be somewhere around 200 million users. Now, if you look at overall Indian cricket viewing public on digital platforms to on TV, we already know that's about 400 million users. Uh, do we, would we see more of that? 
most likely yes uh, do you do we see that all our tier 2 folks have also moved on to the platforms let's say fantasy rummy or anywhere else i would say no similarly if you start looking at a game like rummy which is very rooted to our cultural stuff you will find it more deeply rooted in a, in a tier 2 or a even tier 3 places than what you might see in metros so in, if tier 1 is doing well tier 2 is just we are scratching the surface when you, once you start going into the tier 3 we will find more user base and that's what i was trying to say earlier every year when we start thinking about hey are we would we be able to find more user base if yes where where would that come from that's how we have always figured out like this great growth at least for half a decade definitely sustainable at least on all all different platforms of rmg uh, and i'm talking about a cagr of 50% especially for uh, specifically rummy poker and fantasy as long as regulations stay uh, in in favor of the industry as well so that's on the user base now second thing is just how do you have people transact more on your platform that's primarily driven by the wallet size so if you typically look at the average income of people who might be playing that has been increasing as we as as we see from our text data to otherwise and more and more transparency is also happening on that front and wallet size is a huge thing like if you start comparing it in terms of where else they would be spending that that's on any other entertainment platform let's say watching a movie now people are very comfortable spending a thousand bucks on going to a movie whereas five years before that would have been like a less than 500 rupees would have been uh, painful now that's what generally we will be looking at like how do we carve out space for ourselves and take some of that wallet share um another share is the third is engagement which is the time share which is also like you know everyone has a really hectic schedule but when people look for entertainment can real money or gaming and real money gaming be that outlet to engage these players when there is a time and we have seen that in covid we already saw that there was a 40 percent increase in time spent on the platforms that means that it is being looked favorably uh, can we do more? And that's why you would see like companies like Netflix trying to get into the space in Poland, probably later, you know, they will try to engage more and more, but we definitely see that gaming, the biggest difference between entertainment and gaming in, in my view is, uh, I think, so they talked about there's something action determines your results, right? Most other platforms on entertainment are very passive. You consume, you can't do much about it with gaming. You are actively involved and you can decide the outcome very differently and that plays to uh, our advantage and i think that we should be able to capitalize both on time money as well as uh, finding more user set and that's what will continue to drive uh, overall growth for uh, the industry in all all fillers which we spoke about earlier thanks kapil i agree with you i was on an interview myself and uh, i was also speaking about you know this behavioral change that we are seeing amongst uh, the younger Indian audiences, you know, the willingness to pay for, for not only entertainment. We also did a survey recently at the age of which, which found out that across 11 cities that, you know, the, the younger audiences are looking, uh, I'm not talking about the pro gamers, but, the, you know, even the gamers at large are looking at gaming, uh, you know, as learning for life skills also. So it is now much beyond, uh, you know, just the means of uh, entertainment and the willingness to pay for it. However, as we come to it, ARPUs are still very low. Uh, time spent also, as I was watching uh, one of the reports, is also, uh, and I agree with you that, you know, the time share can go up and likewise, the share of the volume. So I agree with you absolutely. Thank you for that. Uh, coming to you, Yashash, you know, you spoke about the uh, the need to look at casual gaming and uh, KPMG fund is very bullish, you know, their numbers uh, show thing like 6,000 crore already for casual games, which we at the AIGF are uh, a little, uh, you know, uh, circumspect on that particular number, but uh, but suffice to say that you know it is uh, it is a growing uh, piece. Uh, I wanted to get your perspective, you know, and also this move, this entire move uh, for gaming platforms to look at now platforms like you know multi uh, game offerings uh, in one place. So uh, and then casual leading the way. So if you can, you know, give uh, give your perspective on. 
on 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 you know this this part of the uh, piece please uh, yes yeah, sure roland uh, uh wanted to first ask will you excuse me i had to turn my uh, camera off there's a bit of a patchy connection here oh, okay. so like earlier also uh, am i clearly audible yes you are okay awesome uh thanks roland and uh, uh Uh, also thank you kapil for for your perspectives i think is it okay uh, roland if i take a minute to just introduce uh, what it is that we do here at games up and then probably share uh, what our yes, thoughts are yes if, if you can briefly yes awesome okay so uh, for everybody that's watching uh, uh, games up is an html5 gaming company uh, html5 games are basically web based games these are games that don't require any app installs okay uh, generally casual games uh, think of games like carrom ludo pool uh, things like candy crush etc so uh, a lot of these kinds of games uh, uh, are are the kind of games that uh, games up is involved in and uh, we primarily look at html5 versions of these games now what we do is an html5 game publishing business uh, we are not primarily in the business of creating games we source games uh, html5 games from developers around the world uh we then once we onboard any game we sort of uh reengineer the game to suit the needs of our platform embed our sdks so on and so forth and then essentially what makes us a little different and unique um is the way we distribute our games or the way we bring users to our games uh instead of uh, promoting games up uh, to end users we effectively um, embed our games uh, within other popular apps we started some 6 years uh, ago and our primary belief is that when you look at content forms uh, news videos music uh, or gaming uh, when it comes to news videos and music these are all content forms that you consume without the friction of an app install and so we feel should be the case when it comes to casual games especially because casual games also don't have the barrier of language right so Uh, hence html5 gaming now to give you some examples you know you look at let's say an mx player uh, uh they have a gaming section and many of the casual games there are part by games of uh, or you look at let's say um, uh, an amazon uh, they have got a gaming section where games are part by us so in this way games of uh, essentially powers um, some 250 different html5 games uh, within about 3000 different apps and uh, we we sort of uh, entertain about uh, 40 million users Uh, every month on the back of our games uh, that's how we started uh, uh, real money is very dear to us because we have a product called skill clash uh, where we engage users on the back of these casual games uh, but with a real money gaming flavor right uh, as parikshit initially mentioned there are contests and battles and so on and so forth that one can do on the back of skill based casual games also <clears throat> interestingly i think skill clash happens to be the only casual gaming RMG platform in India, which is a uh, mobile web first, and I'm guessing everybody on the panel would argue that it gives you a massive uh, advantage when it comes to cost of user acquisition uh, if you are web first, as long as you are able to uh, build uh, that much retention into the platform to make it app-like. So that's a little bit about us, right? And to answer your question, Roland, uh, about the KPMG report and the numbers, um, I mean, even if you are to go by those numbers, right? I think for me, when I look at this from a casual gaming perspective, uh, there were two. big massive takeaways one is that the number is touted to be as you said you know close to some 6000 crores or 800 million dollars or so now and projected to go uh, you know to a little over 2 billion dollars or so by 2025 and this is just casual games right uh, real money gaming etc being separate uh, and then uh, the other uh, interesting takeaway was the fact that you know we we uh, aim to i mean we hope to be some 650 million gaming users or so every year Uh, by that time right in the next 3 4 years uh, when i look at all of this right uh, 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 and especially coming from an html5 background if i look at this from an html5 gaming lens i think uh, there's a few trends that are very interesting um, uh, which would be and again like this might be a little more uh, uh, in terms of perspectives uh, on casual gaming plus rmg but i think one is uh, this clear adoption by non gaming apps of uh, the fact that they they are much more open to having games on their platform now right uh, you look at uh, you, i mentioned mx player i mentioned amazon you look at apps like glance uh, which sits on a massive massive user base right um, or you look at apps like let's say flipkart these are all apps that are driving fairly high 
uh, engagement on the back of casual games right uh, and again in, when you look at western markets right uh, uh, apps like facebook messenger or or snapchat and even other regional regionally popular messengers like kakao line and so on and so forth have seen a very interesting early success stories for different game studios uh, 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 with the presence of games on otherwise non gaming apps right which is an interesting trend to see um i'll tie this with uh, with what we feel about rmg towards uh, in in a minute or so right but if you look at all of this from the perspective of a company like games up what we see is on the one hand uh, with all of these apps uh, hungry for really good gaming content there's a lot of lot of demand for really good html5 games right uh, uh, these are big names uh, seeking to engage users uh, with with gaming content and on the other hand when it when we look at uh, the indian developer ecosystem or the indian game developer ecosystem uh, it would not be unfair to say that there's a like a fairly large dearth of uh, game development focus when it comes to html5 games right so which can also be looked at as an opportunity and which is one that i'm very excited about uh, in terms of what's to come in the next 3 4 years most of the games for example that we have sourced at games up have largely been from overseas uh, you know indie studios developers bigger studios but largely overseas markets right html5 is still not as popular uh, with uh, with indian gaming studios and when we started you know we've always been an html5 gaming company back in 2015 um uh, uh, it was a, a much more difficult space uh, game development was much much trickier when it came to html5 engines were not all that popular uh, in uh, or 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 uh, all that robust um but when you look at it now i think Uh, with engines like cocos and and the others uh, this space has become much more of a level playing field from a uh, uh, from a developer uh, side right like these you can now make really really good 3d casual games uh, uh, for html5 and these engines also allow you to export for app stores and so on and so forth uh, right and and again uh, uh, when it comes to casual games plus rmg uh, and and from our perspective of html5 i'd say that uh, we are still in html5 in those days where discovery is not as big of a challenge as it is for other casual games on the app stores right it's it's much much more easier to see early success uh, because of the the uh, sort of lack of uh, as much uh, in depth content in html5 as it is uh, in in the native um, uh, apps so i think broadly for me um, uh, when i look at the numbers in that report uh, what's exciting about how casual gaming grows over the next few years Um, uh, has largely got to do with three uh, three areas, which are which three opportunities actually. Is what I'd say. One is you know um, for a lot of the studios that are coming up in India, making uh, some really good games. Uh, uh, one is how does the next three to four years look like in terms of adoption of uh, the HTML5 platform, and and hopefully you know the role that Games Up uh, can play as a publisher to improve uh, say discovery or monetization. Uh, the second area or the second thing that i'm very excited about is uh, for some of the studios in india and there are a few that have adopted to html5 right uh, the emergence of html5 games uh, and uh, in terms of more game depth right uh, and live ops like you see in uh, in in sort of some of the native games and and finally like when you look at all of this and uh, sort of try and tie it to to rmg like a little contrary to what you suggested roland uh, i think what what will be very exciting to see is you know can there be casual games that can be stand alone rmg successes right like we now have a lot of these aggregate platforms but if you look at any of the games uh, on these aggregate platforms right uh, where people are transacting money these are not games with game depth right it's not inherently the game that's driving the retention Uh, somehow when you play rummy there's a degree of seriousness and there's a degree of addiction which wants to you know sort of bring you back to the platform and it's it's fun to play that uh, right but a lot of the casual games that we see right now uh, in rmg platforms are, do not carry that level of game depth or or that live ops right like could you have let's say something like a call of duty uh, 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 or 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 an equivalent but primarily monetized via the rmg angle right and so the emergence of that over the next few years would be supremely interesting to see because i think uh with what skills has been doing some of some of these individual apps have seen pretty good uh you know uh, numbers emerge uh, in overseas markets also so yeah so broadly i think uh, uh i think these are a few areas that are very exciting to me uh, uh adoption of html5 games by 
non html5 studios uh, and development of more uh, uh, deeper uh, sort of html5 content uh, by existing studios such that they can also be uh, sort of you know uh, stand alone rmg successes if they want that to be i think uh, that's what excites me thanks yes that's a good perspective uh, and different from you know our at least uh, day to day uh, interactions in gaming but to note that on a lighter note uh, addiction is taboo word on on our panel uh, so okay coming to parikshit now so parikshit full <laughs> no i'm just joking parikshit uh, you know i also want to take on a different uh, 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 subject here now about cryptocurrency you know that you know the cryptocurrency digital payments these have been enablers for this industry to get to where we are today so i wanted to get your perspective on you know, how cryptocurrency is really helping indian uh, and you know the growth story as we spoke about the next level of growth obviously a lot of indian gaming companies are looking towards the west the international markets for growth and you know uh, and some of them have already done it npl and so many others so i wanted to get your perspective uh, how cryptocurrency is enabling maybe in fantasy in poker and some of the other things yeah thanks roland so before i get to cryptocurrency maybe i want to touch upon the topic of uh, rummy because predominantly we were a rummy company yes. uh, until the 1st of september and yeah. we actually added fantasy sports because of the legal clarity and all that stuff um having yesh uh, pointed out rummy twice uh, and also about the rmg aspect Uh, i want to compare this case of rmg games of skill with kitkat uh, kitkat also went to court stating that they were not a chocolate and they were a wafer and uh, apparently court actually ruled out uh, the case in the favor of kitkat because it has 70% of wafer and 30% of chocolate so <laughs> if you look at uh, rummy and uh, distribution of cards and uh, predominantly skill overtaking the distribution uh, i think um, at least kitkat was on the 70% area but uh, i think if the skill is good and if the discarding capability is great um you can actually have 90% uh, as the uh, benchmark for rummy as such and having said that uh, one good point he said is uh, addiction which was a taboo word but it's because it's 90% that's why people come back and try to play hard and that's why uh, rummy is actually successful and also it's not coming from our generation right it's coming from our forefather generation like roland said um, i i don't know if mahabharata and all, at that time people played rummy but um, eventually if people wrote about books after mahabharata there would have been rummy and our forefathers would have actually played is my view so that's on the rummy friend and uh, on the crypto right uh, uh, ideally there are about 10000 plus cryptos at the moment and there are about 400 plus exchanges uh, and uh, um, they have already spent a decade time uh, as an industry my personal view is that uh, an indian company um, doing crypto we've done a lot of research on what can be done because of the non clarity or because we call it gray uh, similar to if if you ask me about uh, rummy in 2012 where we are we are with crypto today at that same position where we don't know what fema rules are what fera rules are uh, though you can operate within india can you actually operate uh, with players overseas and can we actually merge the liquidity but the principal point comes to a place where uh, crypto is not a legal tender and it's more towards an asset class uh, at least uh, uh, the people the investment bankers in the us when they started investing in cryptos their positioning was uh, that we will actually look at this as an asset class and not as a currency and uh, while they were investing i think uh, a few hundred coins come out every week uh, which are limited and uh, they're all actually swiped by these guys and because they hold 30% of 2.2 trillion which is the whole uh, market cap of uh, uh, crypto they predominantly uh, having a voice and that subtle voice is actually saying that this is an asset class now uh, if you look at asset class do we play with gold rummy or poker no we don't uh, but again crypto is actually becoming a favorable thing for few gray market guys and there are some clean companies also doing this so i think indian gaming companies uh, cannot attract overseas audiences uh, at least as far as i know uh, and subject to correction 
uh, however the indian companies could actually outsource their software to a uh, maybe crypto friendly company where uh, crypto friendly country which could be malta gibraltar where there are licenses uh, available for uh, these specific segments and actually run from there and accept indians and overseas clients and even merge their liquidity is what our understanding is as a company we've taken various opinions on uh, whether to be in singapore or whether to be in any other country but uh, i think uh, um, uh, bvis of the world and zurichs of the world and uh, uh, estonians of the world have actually emerged as winners because of their cryptocurrencies policies having said that uh, estonia uh, is is a base of one of uh, a very uh, very good friends uh, company coin gaming group they've actually uh, invested in india also uh, they are actually doing full crypto for casino sports betting and everything and uh, they only accept crypto that's one aspect uh, we could actually look at um, outsourcing your software to any other country where the company can actually start taking your software and do it second aspect is uh, ideally if you were depositing with a currency legal tender convert that into a cryptocurrency and uh, allow them to play from the countries where crypto is not allowed like for example india crypto is not allowed so you deposit 100 rupees but it actually converts into maybe 0.10 of bit uh, 0.01 of bitcoin and then you actually use that to play your games overseas and then again that's converted back into inr and taken but having said that where it's being converted what's the processing fee uh, there are a lot of aspects on that i think hopefully if our intelligence is correct by december government wants to come up with like a crypto policy and iama is doing a great job and you guys are all part of it um i if there is a clarity on the fema fera thing uh, it will be a great thing for the industry uh, at least for the crypto industry and like skill games are tying up with rmg i'm sure uh, crypto will also tie up with rmg having said that uh, uh, i think uh, indian investor right uh, in the capital markets is only about 2 to 3% so out of the 100 people who are saving money only 2 to 3% of them invest in the capital markets now uh, it's it's a challenging debate that um, are the crypto investors more than this 3% uh, that's one cha- one challenging question second uh, is will this 2% and uh, crypto investors have similar kind of investments uh, uh, i mean equal investments in capital markets and cryptos will actually derive our future like if we have uh, at least 4% of uh, india investing in cryptos and say in that 2 trillion we have a good share then the share of wallet like kapil says uh, would be more for us from the crypto side and it makes sense for indian gaming so that's my view uh, roland over to you thank you uh, parikshit those were interesting uh, inputs that you gave i'm mindful of the time but i definitely want to get sudhir and christian to maybe i'll start with sudhir as a co-founder uh, you know on this profitability thing uh, and we alluded to that in the back stage when we were there uh, you know how would you uh, you know define the, this entire thing about ggr gmv what would be the right metric uh, you know from from a perspective of a co-founder uh, answerable to investors for example and also uh, something on you know the operational uh, complexities that uh, that we face as you know in this sector so sudhir if you can give your perspective sure i think uh, just in the interest of time uh, you have a very brief answer on both of those uh to the first one in terms of what metrics uh, you look at at the end of the day uh, gaming i think at one level you need to look at it just like any other business uh, used to be in the oil and gas world earlier or in other businesses I mean, fundamentally you're looking at uh, is the business going to turn a profit is the cash flow going to be coming out of that at some point uh that's the long term view and especially for listed or companies close to that scale uh, that's the only metric really to look at But in the early stages, uh, where this is a market which is, as uh, Kapil said, 50% plus CAGR growth, and you can see that for many years. So all investors would be very happy to invest in businesses which have high growth, may not have profit today, but clearly have customer satisfaction. Uh, number of customers is growing, their engagement and their monetization rates, retention are high. So I think if that happens, investors will very well come in. uh gmv is one metric which you could look at which is cross uh, the overall value of how much you wage you get played but also uh, what is the net rate which is net of any bonuses etc that you given in that's probably the more 
lasting metric which people will look at and then eventually it all translates to cash flow. Uh, so I think that's on uh, that side. Um, on the operational complexities as a... As I think a specific to India, uh, so one is overall in gaming, I think as I mentioned, stuff. I think UI, UX, how do people enjoy your game, how do they interact with it, those are the most important factors. How do you build for a very diverse kind of player base in India? Uh, uh, people who may not be comfortable in one language, you may need to actually cater for multiple languages, both in your interface as well as in the customer support, for example. Uh, uh, in India, there's always a lack of regulatory clarity still around gaming or some aspects. So they go around payments, around settlements, uh, there could be issues that you need to resolve. Uh, definitely, different states have different laws. So therefore, in terms of location, uh, in terms of uh, other guidelines which need to be uh, state-specific, uh, or maybe some one game is not allowed in one state, but is allowed in other games. That's the same game is allowed in another state. How do you deal with those? So, but those are complexities. I think India teaches you all that, and that if you can master those, it's, it also becomes easier to go to other markets. Um, so I think that's the plus side. Right. I'll, uh, yeah, sorry, what? No, no, I just said, uh, I think I'll, I'll stop there. I'm conscious, I think we're running out of time, and I think Krishna yeah. also had something no, we'll get, to say, uh, so maybe we we'll pass. Yeah, I'll, you know, I have some more questions, but uh, let me get Krishnandu in. I want a different perspective from you, Krishnandu, on the, you know, on the aspect of uh, customer acquisition using social media. Uh, uh, you know, what are the challenges that you see there? And uh, given, you know, your background, I know you're the chief revenue officer, but I just want to get this uh, point in. And, you know, what are the bases uh, for, uh, for all of us, you know, in fact, if you can answer that. How are we, you know, when we say, uh, you know, when this issue about child, uh, you know, the, the, the screen time going up for children and things like that, it does not apply to us. So we say, you know, if we are only 18 plus in the uh, online skill gaming RNG. How are we ensuring that? Firstly, on, you know, your challenges with the social media on customer acquisitions. Yeah, so uh, for customer acquisitions through social media, as uh, like so they actually pointed out one very important point that uh, the regulations are all state wise and uh, due to this uh, complication so a lot of games so for say for example if i talk about facebook so facebook will allow let's say to promote any um, campaign which is relevant for rummy and but uh, for poker they will block that so yeah there's debate whether why it should block why it shouldn't block so there are uh, challenges to run those campaigns and similarly for other platforms also, say for example, if, if you are running campaigns uh, in any other platform, so some platforms say for example, uh, Instagram, Instagram through some means you can still run it, but uh, through Telegram. So uh, as an operator, you have to keep on seeking for those alternates. So in fa uh, if Facebook is not allowing you, so probably let's say switch over to Telegram. If Telegram allows you then look for more, let's say go for Viber or some other platform, which is helping you to uh, connect to the user, create groups. There are now Discord channels, which are also used as acquisitions. There are um, uh, applications which are uh, like, which is one of them is Clubhouse. That also is uh, helping acquiring uh, those users where your traditional methods of social media acquisition doesn't work because of uh, several state laws that's in place. So there's always a workaround for those activities. What about the, you know, smaller companies, uh, you are one of the bigger companies, uh, you know, and there's no entry barrier. So there are some 400 startups in this case. <laughs> okay, if you keep the game development guide uh, aside, maybe 300, 250, 300. How would they, you know, uh, acquire customers and what would happen? Eventually? What is your view? See, it's all about uh, end of the day, the traditional method of online acquisition predominantly lies with Google, and that's where the chunk of your uh, yeah. your spends everything, everything is coming in. You spend maximum there, and you get maximum benefit out of that. But when it comes to the smaller players, and that's being blocked, then uh, for the smaller players, they look out for different alternatives. Like they go to the uh, network agencies. They go to the platforms which can serve. So, say for example, we have so many online pages, uh, online sites, uh, including news sites, game sites, and even like uh, there are a lot of companies who have started uh, uh, 
uh, introducing ads in between uh, movies. So as a user, you upload um, uh, like a small movie clip in YouTube and you run that ad in between. So there are multiple ways to actually uh, run it, but that's how it's going to be done till the time there's a proper consensus and everybody is aligned that yes, uh, all these games are eventually skill games and uh, all states accept that. And then probably Google and Facebook of the world, they will actually come back and say, okay, let's open it up for everyone. Great. One last thing. How do you ensure there are only 18 plus uh, 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 age group who are playing on the platform? See, one way is definitely as soon as a person signs up, yes, uh, the sign up check is there in terms of demographics. So you can't check whether, literally don't know whether that person is 18 plus or not. But that happens when a person makes a first deposit, there's a KYC which is mandatory. So with that KYC, you can validate whether that person is a, actually 18 plus or not. Okay. I am uh, scheduled to be part of a consultative session with one of the ministries on, on gaming and child protection. Okay. And there were many more questions actually, you know, uh, that I wanted to ask. Uh, uh, but I think we are uh, run out of time. Uh, so, but I think you know the the, the high level uh, uh, questions were put in, and you know we got perspectives from all of you. All. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, I can't see so on, but I'd like to thank on behalf of uh, everyone, uh, Parikshit uh, and uh, Kapil, uh, Yashash, Krishnendu, and Sudhir for a great panel, and I I enjoyed interacting with you. Thank you for your views, and thanks so for having me and the others. Thank you, Thanks, thank Roland. You. Thank you, likewise. Thank you. Thank you, Roland. Thank you, everyone. Uh, I, 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 like to, I would like to close this session by thanking our partners. Titan Partner Games 24-7, powered by partner AppsFlyer, in association with Trackia, Platinum Partner OnePlus, Content Delivery Partner Limelight Networks, supported by Invest India, Knowledge Partner Retsia, Industry Partner All India Gaming Federation. Thank you, speakers and moderator. Thank you for a very exciting discussion today. Thank you. Thanks. Thank, Thank you so much.